On behalf of the steering committee of Growing in Faith, the New York Diaconia Program, welcome. Welcome to our 2020 graduation celebration. Make a joyful noise unto the earth, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord, the Lord is good. good. His mercy is, is everlasting. everlasting. And his, his truth, truth endures to all generations. generations. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord. O Lord. When a great crowd gathered and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, let anyone with ears to hear listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables so that looking they may not perceive and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones on the path are those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock are those who when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root, they believe only for a little while and in a time of testing fall away. But as for what fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in the good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Grace to you all and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to welcome you all to this time of graduation, to this celebration. Um, welcome you all to this place, wherever this place happens to be for you. It's a big day. It's a weird day but a big day. Congratulations to the graduates on the completion of two years of intensive, exciting, at times frustrating, and faith deepening study. Think about the way you felt as you first started going to Growing in Faith classes, as you began to enter that first class, which was probably on the Bible, a nice light topic to just get you into the spirit of study. Were you nervous, excited, deer in the headlights, or ready to go, and look at you now. Theologians, biblical scholars, visitation professionals, how much you have changed over these past two years. And hopefully you also feel part of a community of learners and disciples as you went through this experience together. So after two years of learning and growing, 
What kind of soil are you? Beaten down, rocky, weedy, or fertile, ready to grow more? Depends on the day, right? Some days it depends on the hour. This parable referred to as the parable of the sower, but you already knew that, often invites us to ask the question, where do I find myself? What part of the parable speaks to my experience? Usually that means in comparison to different kinds of soil, and that's a useful discipline. But today on the occasion of your graduation, I would like you to take a look at this very well-known parable from a different point of view. Think of yourself as the sower. Does that seem strange? In our hearing of this parable over the years, did you ever take much notice of the sower, that extravagant seed caster? who seems to have more than enough to just throw it on rock and weedy ground and path and fertile soil. When Jesus explains the meaning of the parable to his disciples afterwards, he never specifies who the sower is in any of the gospels if you're doing your exegesis. He defines the seed and the kinds of soil, but not the sower, which leads us to assume certain things. We assume that the sower is God the Father, or Jesus himself, and that's certainly true. But perhaps by not defining it, Jesus is inviting his disciples to see themselves in that role in the parable and in their lives and ministries, and us as well. After two years of growing in faith, no matter how you plan to use what you have learned, whether feeling called to become a deacon or using this this experience for your own deeper understanding and discipleship, For what have you been equipped? You've learned some things about God, about yourself, about faith, about the church, about history. But what will you do with them? In Ephesians, Paul writes, The gifts that God gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, some diaconia grads, we might add, to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. You might consider yourselves to be graduates of the Word Sowers program, to equip the saints with what you have learned and experienced, and to build up the body of Christ. As the prophet Jeremiah struggled with his call, he made this affirmation in the midst of his pain. If I say I will not mention God or speak any more in God's name, then within me there's something like a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I'm weary with holding it in, and I cannot. I pray that your time in growing in faith has set you on fire as Pentecost people, because the world so desperately needs those who will extravagantly and fearlessly speak in God's name, whether in word or action or both. Immediately after explaining this parable to his disciples, Jesus says, No one after lighting a lamp hides it, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. If indeed growing in faith has set you on fire, has lit your lamp, don't hide it. As we know from the parable, there is plenty of seed and power in the word. You are about to graduate from the sower's program. There are graduate level courses, but right now God has given you everything that you need. Jesus calls us to go, therefore, and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, Jesus promises, I am with you always to the end of time. Thanks be to God for community, for teachers and location managers and guides, for open minds and hearts. And for you, sowers, the world needs what God is equipping you to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Called together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the mending of God's world. Gracious God, We give thanks for your living word that goes out and does not return empty. Make your church a partner 
in accomplishing what you desire. Unite us in faith, witness, and mission. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For our graduating class, bless them as they go forward this day, filled with your love and grace. Give them loving and serving hearts that they may be the good soil that will nourish and grow the seeds of faith that you have planted. Hear us, O oh God. Our mercy, mercy is, great. is great. For nations suffering the violence and hunger of war, watch over and protect those who work for justice and peace, both home and abroad. For exiles and refugees, lead them home in peace and bless them with your fullness. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. For victims and perpetrators of race-based crime, for all who suffer sorrow, illness, or injury, those who are suffering or caring for loved ones with COVID-19, especially those we lift up before you silently or aloud, Bring them justice, healing, and new life by the power of your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. For the Growing in Faith New York Diaconia Program, its leaders, teachers, students, and graduates, shower them with your blessings as they continue to grow in their faith. Through our shared work, let your word prosper among us and bring life to the community beyond our doors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. In thanksgiving for all who have died recently and for strangers and dear ones who have blessed our lives and sparked our hope, we pray especially for past students and graduates and our loved ones. Give comfort and confidence to all who mourn. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I would like to introduce our uh, speaker, our student speaker for this year. Uh, He's our Manhattan location manager, and he's also a 2020 grad from the Manhattan location. I'd like to introduce with pleasure to hear his words, Robert Wechtenheiser. Bishop Egensteiner, the New York Diaconia Steering Committee, pastors, fellow students and graduates, and family and friends. I am honored to speak to you today. In 2016, I returned to worship at St. Luke's Lutheran Church. By January of 2018, I found myself serving as parish administrator. That summer, Pastor Strasser mentioned the New York Diaconia program in one of his Sunday announcements. I grabbed a brochure to learn more. The front cover had a joyful dancing tree logo. It looked like fun, a way to deepen my faith and expand my skills to be of additional service to my church. And that dancing tree was calling me. Tree images occur many times in the Bible. The one I find most interesting is the mustard tree Jesus used in his parable about the kingdom of God and the measure of faith given to each of us. The mustard seed is tiny, yet it produces a mighty tree Jesus was teaching that a small, dead-looking seed contains life and is life-giving in such a way that it leads to the bearing of fruit. I see such a seed in our logo. When I was in kindergarten, my teacher used an interesting nature lesson for us to make a gift for Mother's Day. We received a paper cup filled with dirt and several zinnia seeds. We planted the seeds, watered them, and watched them begin to grow. The seedlings were about three inches tall with strong, tiny leaves just in time to take them home as a gift. But on the bus ride home, I looked at this tiny thing and became impatient. 
I knew what grown flowers looked like from my grandmother's garden. And that's what I wanted to give my mother. I began to gently tug on the seedling to make it bigger. And I continued this the whole ride home. When I got in the house, I had a very limp spindly seedling hanging over the edge of a cup for my mother. Not the proper way to nurture something growing. Jesus doesn't say directly in his parable, but allows the reader to envision that with proper nurturing, that tiny mustard seed transforms itself into a mighty tree in the world around it. The same is true when we find proper nurturing of our faith through the spirit, and we realize its potential to transform us in our souls, growing from a seed to a magnificent tree a joyful dancing tree. The Diakonia program would provide the nurturing I wanted to grow my faith. But two years of study? Two years? My little boy impatience was still part of me. I wanted it faster. Then I remembered a saying from a daily devotional calendar. God doesn't give you patience, only the opportunity to practice it. Well, Bob, here was your chance, but I did not want a limp spindly plant again. The 12 month, the 12 courses of study with extensive reading, lectures, group discussions, class projects, and personal reflection provided me with a deeper understanding of God's word, our church, our beliefs and morals, and ways to fulfill our charge to continue the mission work of Jesus Christ. I also was able to see more clearly and to witness what faith had grown in those around me, in my two fellow graduating classmates. The tree Shiming Sun had been growing ever since she came to this country from China, was finally able to worship with complete freedom and found a home church in Queens where the loving and living Christ was fully revealed to her by her pastor. Desiree Jewsbury's tree that had been nurtured by her mother tenderly for many years in a deeply spiritual home and church life. The mighty trees of the pastors and deacons I had as instructors whose strong branches of knowledge and experience shaded us and at the same time allowed the light of God's word to filter down upon us. The large orchard of trees in my congregation at St. Luke's, each one offering fruits of all sorts, skills and talents, struggles and achievements, all gifts of the spirit they freely shared. And the beautiful tree of encouragement, kindness, trust, and friendship I experienced working by his side every day, my pastor, Arden Strasser. So, what of my tree? This diaconia experience allowed me to patiently take that tiny seed of faith I was given and allow it to remain rooted and grounded and properly nourished with sound education. Seeds have the power to remake the worlds around them. And that's what faith does for us, beginning with the world within. My tree is still growing and it's joyfully dancing. Thank you, Bob. Now, as we get ready to uh, greet our graduates from each location, Standing in for Manhattan Location Manager, Bob Wettenheiser, the Reverend Arden Strasser. It is my distinct privilege to begin the introduction of this year's graduates. 
the Manhattan location, we are delighted to present to you Desiree Ann Jewsbury from St. James and St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Ozone Park. Shiming Sun from Trinity Lutheran Church in Middle Village. And Robert E. Wechtenheiser from St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Manhattan. Iconic and Zoom Location Manager, Ms. Elizabeth Holtzman. Good afternoon. The graduates from the Peconic and Zoom location are Herme Barbagallo from St. Michael's Lutheran Church in Amagansett, Walter W. Meyer from St. Francis Lutheran Church, San Francisco, California, Mark A. Nocero from St. Andrew's Lutheran Church in Smithtown, and Susan F. Soper from Hope Lutheran Church in Selden. Queen's Location Manager, Synod Deacon, Robert, Roberta Ditt Myers. Good afternoon. The Queen's graduates for Diaconia this year are Diane Gilroy, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Belrose, Susan Henyon, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Belrose, Laura Stifel, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Belrose. Please put your crosses on, ladies. Western Suffolk Location Manager, Synodeacon Donna Marie Fielster. Good afternoon. The graduates from the Western Suffolk Location are Angela M. Bello from Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Lake Ronkonkoma, Denise C. Lewis, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Lake Ronkonkoma, Robert A. Lewis, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Lake Ronkonkoma. The graduates, please put on their videos. <clears throat> Let's give them a nice warm round of applause. Congratulations. Yay! Well done! <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Well done, Congratulations everybody. to all. Yes, well done. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, oh, also with you. you. I invite you to share a greeting of peace with one another, those in your household, those here on this graduation meeting. Peace be with you. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God bless you all. Peace be with you all. And you and you. Peace.
Also with you. Also with you. Gather together. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, our Father, our Father, Lord, 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 Thy kingdom come, come, come. Thy will be done, will be done. on earth oh, as it is in heaven. Give us this, this day our daily, daily bread. bread. And forgive us, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses. As we be we those, those who trespass against us. us. And lead us, lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the, the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom and the power of the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Want to thank everyone that made this <clears throat> service possible. Our readers and our uh, bishop, thank you for your lovely words. Uh, for Bob and his wonderful student um, testimony, mm -hmm. for Excellent. all of you uh, being here and uh, participating in this first ever uh, <laughs> Zoom <laughs> graduation. Uh, just a reminder that you, all the graduates are invited to next year's graduation. If you would like to walk and uh, we will place the <clears throat> excuse me, the cross on your neck then, and we'll get to take uh, an in-person photo with all of our uh, graduates at that time. Uh, we're sorry we can't do it now, but this is where we are right now. So that's okay. Um, I also like to thank uh, the Haddock family from uh, St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Huntington Station for everyone getting involved in our musical. Um, I'm so glad and recording that for our use. I'd like to ask God to bless all of you in your future studies. May you continue to grow in your faith. May you continue to spread that seed and spread God's love uh, throughout the world that is desperately needing it right now. And we're um, really we're needing you. The church needs you now to, to speak up and to be a witness and to keep, keep learning, keep growing your faith and being involved in however God leads you to do that. Uh, so we thank you. Any other final words, Bishop, to our group? 
I'm so excited to be here. Um, this is my first officiating at a diaconate graduation. It is memorable, and uh, I am very grateful to God for all of you and for all your hard work. And as Pastor Policino said, keep up the good work. God has lots of big plans for us, and we'll realize them together. So thank you for who you are. Thank Congratulations, you. everyone. Thank you, and God bless Congrats. everyone. Just smile for a minute. Let me take Yay. a quick photo. <laughs> It says it will be on Zoom, but it's what we have right now. <laughs> thank you. We'll get an official one next year. So thank, thank you, you all. all. God bless. Stay safe. Stay well. And until we meet again, which is hopefully soon. God bless. Amen. And thank you, you all too. for joining us. Have Thanks. an awesome day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Congratulations. 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 Congratul